Well, good morning and welcome to Tricks of the Trade. We got our old music back. And, yes, uh, we do, and I got that old voice back. That's oh. uh, that's uh, a very young Greg Wood. That's right, yeah. from about 25, 6, or so many years ago. We've gone back into the Rusty Racks for Wrinkle Wax to pull that one out. <laughs> Well, that's that's all right. Well, I, I'm gonna thank Mr. Brad McCoy for getting my uh, yeah, bump music back, and I'm sitting here with Jimmy Duke, and we're gonna try to get things rolling this morning. If you got something on your mind, uh, pick up the uh oh the text and give yeah. us a call. <laughs> yes. We're not gonna be phone calling this morning. Warm your thumbs up. Now, I know it's gonna be hard for you to believe. We have a glitch here at the radio station this morning. Well, like I said, things go back to the way they used to be. There, there are about 10 steps you have to go through to get this phone system lined up. And I know how to do it. I I'm, I'm, I'm do it every week, right? Yeah, all right. Do it every day. But today, it lets me put in your password number, and then it quits. It just disconnects. And I'm, I've tried it four times, and that's enough. Well, it's probably trying to get back at me for something, but <laughs> as I said earlier, if I could just get my rotary dial phone back up here in a cord, I believe we could fix this thing. I believe thing. we could do that. If we had enough string and two tin cans, we'd be in business. That's right. That's yep. right. Yep. Well, I'll tell you what. Give them the text line yeah, number this morning. Yeah, we can do morning. that. The Victory Honda text line is 731-410-7560. That way you don't have to uh, use your early morning voice, you know, and embarrass yourself if it's like mine here. So just... Dial that up with your thumbs and type in a message, and we'll get it right on the air. That's right. Guaranteed. we we got lots of things to talk about today, I think, if I can remember. <laughs> if not, we'll make something up, or if you got something well, on your mind, just call. You want me to give you a little booster? We'll start with this if you want to. What's that? It's Memorial Day weekend. Yes, it is. And one of the things that we, we like to see people do on Memorial Day is fly the flag. That's right. you got yep. to have a pole if you're going to do that. That's right. It's kind of hard to stand out there on the corner with a wooden stick and wave it. it <laughs> Get it's tired. not nearly as effective, you know. <laughs> uh, these days, somebody would run over you. Well, isn't that the truth? Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it's a good thing to start with. You know, uh, uh, you'll see a lot of flag displays, and uh, and, and they, they sort of give you instructions, sort of. Yeah. Yep. But things change with flags, and I learned this the hard way uh, when I put one up at my own house years ago. They'll, they'll sell you these little kits mm -hmm. and uh, you, you'll uh, dig you a hole and you'll put your pole in there and you'll put it up and you'll put that little uh, flag on there. Um, no disrespect to Old Glory, but it's a chintzy looking little flag that comes with those kits. Yes. And then you'll get this thing in the mail. How it happens, I'd never know. But normally within a month after you put a flag up, you'll get an advertisement in the mail for a real flag <laughs> from the Betsy Ross Foundation oh and all that. Stuff. And it's a real uh, cloth flag, mm -hmm. full size. Yep. And uh, you'll say, I got to have one of those. And it, it seems like they're about $55 or something like that. But it's a full size, real genuine flag with no polyester or anything in it got the metal grommets and all that yeah kind of yeah, yeah got yeah, the yeah. metal grommets so you'll put that up and then the wind comes and the next thing you know your flagpole starts leaning a little bit and uh, some have even been known to snap off because they're just not made uh, for the real flags they're right. just for those little little dime store flags that right. they they put in these kits so you know, it, 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 when you get started and you want to put up a good flagpole, just like a house, you got to have a good foundation. That's true. And if you'll uh, get you a post hole digger and some concrete and maybe um, might want a ruler if you're not good at guessing and uh, go out and see where you want to put this flag. Now, before you start digging down in that hole a lot of times people will have a a yard light out there that they'll want to shine up on that flag right so the first thing you need to realize is because i've learned this the hard way too you need to know where that electric wire is because if you go stabbing those post hole diggers down in the <laughs> ground and hit that wire you're gonna know it you'll find it yes. you will find it real quick and then you got a little patch job to do but anyway Make sure you don't have any uh, phone lines or fiber optic lines or 
you know, there is a free service. You can call Tennessee One Call, uh, 811, and they'll come out and mark your utilities uh, and uh, make sure there's nothing there you're going to hit. And then time come to dig a hole. Well, you need to kind of know what kind of soil you got there. Has it been disturbed before? Is it been filled in? Uh, is it clay? Uh, but you need a good, firm soil because if you don't have that, you got to go deeper. Right. And sometimes if you go deeper, your you pole won't be as long as you think it is when you put it up. <laughs> your flag will be dragging. Your flag will be dragging. That's right. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And it might be that way after you put the flagpole well, up. that's true, too. If I do it, it will. <laughs> so, anyway, as a general rule of thumb, we're going to assume we're going to put up like a 20-foot flagpole. Okay. And that normally will have about a 2-inch aluminum pole with it. And you'll want that. I don't care what the instructions tell you, but you're going to want that between 2 and 3 feet deep, more towards the 3 feet side than the 2 foot. Because that will take a good, uh, strong wind. Right. So, and the other thing is you want to always, that your kit will come with a little plastic sleeve. It's like a hollow pipe, but it's plastic. Then that, that's to set your pole down in. Right. In case you want to take it out, you know. So, you, you dig your hole, and your hole needs to be about six or seven times wider than the dimensions of your flag pole. So if you've got a two inch pole, let's say you want at least a, a 12 to 14 inch diameter hole. And then you want to go down, oh, I'd say 30 inches at least, 36 is better. And then you'll want to backfill that with, you want to put your little, little sleeve in there. And uh, I would put at least two sections of the pole up and for the sole purpose of being able to plumb it. You'd be surprised how your eyesight gets off right. if uh, if you just try to go by that little plastic sleeve and you'll have a sleeve set in concrete and it's not plumb and you, your uh, flagpole gets to leaning toward Elizabeth's house over there and, and that's right. not good. So not good. anyway, slide the sleeve over the end of two sections of that pole, stand it upright in the hole and uh, put you a level on it and make sure that it's plumb. And uh, used to, we could line them up with the antennas on your neighbor's house, <laughs> but nobody has antennas anymore. Where's the CB radio when you need That's one? That's right. <laughs> That's right. But, uh, you know, put your, put your sleeve down in the center of your hole and then backfill with concrete. Now, some people will dry pack that, which means just pour the dry concrete in the hole and the moisture from the ground will set it up. But on flagpoles, I think it works a little better if you'll actually mix it up in a bucket. Right. Pour it in there and get it up level with the ground. And then let it set up uh, till tomorrow. Uh, unless you know that it's going to be a calm day and uh, no high winds or anything like that. Then come back and put your pole together. Slide it down in your sleeve. And there you got your flag pole. And you're ready to uh, put your flag on it and wave it and uh, be proud of it. Right. Now, do you know, and now that you got your pole up there, and you got yeah. your, you got your strings to raise and lower your flag, do you know mm -hmm. the proper way to display the flag on Memorial Day? I had that yesterday, and I remember enough of it. I think I can tell you how to do it. According to the U.S. Code, oh, it's, yes. it's in the book. Uh -huh. You uh, briskly raise the flag all the way to the top on Memorial Day. Then you ceremoniously, slowly lower it to half-staff. Leave it there till noon, at which time you may return it to full staff. I did not know that. There you go. Jackie Utley, you know Miss Jackie. I do. Jackie sent me that the other day as a little reference thing, and I really appreciated that. And uh, Now, if you're on, well, like mine, where you just stick the, you know, the, the pole in the, in the hole on the wall, uh, you, you can't do all that good stuff. But if you're doing it properly on a, on a f fixed flagpole, then that's how you do it. Take it all the way to the top, bring it down to half staff till noon. At noon, you go back out and raise her all the way up until sunset. There how you go. That? How about that? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I learned something today. I didn't know that myself. But anyway, there you go, folks. Today would be a good day. Not too hot. 
and uh, you can go ahead and get you a flagpole. I know they got these uh, nice little kits at uh, the big box stores, and uh, you can go pick them up, get you a sack of concrete. And if you got a PhD, you can put one in <laughs> real quick. Yes, so, you do. That's right. Yep. So that's about all I got on flagpoles this morning. And okay. uh, we got what we got over there? We got a couple of texts coming in. Number one, it says, are you on y'all.com today? Yes, we are. Uh, Mr. Y'all is nodding his head over here, John Raw. And uh, my, uh, my my bad for not saying that. But we, we had all this new music this morning. I kind of got discombobulated. You just got plum giddy, didn't I you? I did. I did. And, yes, we are on y'all.com, Y-A-L-L dot C-O-M. And uh, we'll be right there staring back at you. And then we have a, a – uh, a, uh, I've got I've got a real a real snide remark. Not, not a remark, but an answer to this question, but I'm not going to say it. I'll let you do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it said, that's not that bad. It says, why is there trash in the tub after I run my water? You was dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, because you let your mom-in-law stay too long. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't say that. <laughs> what kind of trash? Isn't I don't know. Why is there trash in tub after I run my water? I'm thinking what what they're saying probably is they're getting some debris through their water spigot. I don't know. Maybe their mother-in-law. Who knows? Yeah. They, uh, huh. I, I don't know. Give, give us a little more, a little more hip on that. We need a little more, a little more uh, in depth. Tell us, tell us what the trash looks like. We, we can figure out why it's in there. Yeah, that might be a good thing to do. But we'll answer it. If we don't know, we'll make something That's up. right. We'll, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll go back to the Bill Way, Bill Way method. Never never let the truth get in the way of a good story. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Well, let's see. You know, I got up this morning, and uh, it's cold. It was a little nippy out, wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, I, one, one of the things I traditionally talk about on Memorial Day show, because it's the uh, the official beginning of summer, so they say. Yeah. Uh, is it's time to, if you hadn't used it already, and you probably have, your air conditioner. Get it all checked out. Oh, I've been using mine. Well, I have too. It's big boy sweats. Yes, we listen, don't we? That's, we do, we do. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you haven't had your, your favorite uh, HVAC tech out to check your, your unit out, you need to do that, and because uh, you've already been cutting the grass a couple of times, yep. you probably slung some of the clippings up against the condenser. You probably ought to check your freon level. As a matter of fact, I'm guilty. Uh, Secretary of the War Department, that would be my wife. She uh, <laughs> said to me last night. She says, uh, "I need you to check the air in my little room." She she sits in this room and makes gnomes. No. Gnomes. Gnomes for your Gnome. garden. Gnomes. <laughs> no, these are cloth gnomes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She showed me a picture of them. They're just yeah. little ugly little critters that just <laughs> sit there. They're kind of cute. She does a great job. She's the only person I know that can put glitter on a gnome. Okay. Why? <laughs> I, don't I don't know, know. but it, it's, a, it's a good thing. Well, you wouldn't want to lose it on a dark night. Yeah, know? we we, in, uh, we we embellished a few and took them to McKenzie last night. All right. Yeah, my uh, 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 grandkids were there, and they were opening up a little shop last night on, on Court Square in McKenzie. Cool. Nice little store up there, and uh, uh, we went up there to visit and visited the other cities, and and uh, they got a nice little thing happening up in McKenzie. I like it up there. That's a nice little town. It is. Nice I, town. I like it. We're right across the street from William Funer Furniture Company. Wow. Yeah, hey, and you can buy anything. Up internationally there. known, man. Internationally. I'm telling you. Yeah, okay. We got clarification running out of the spigot. Oh, we have. What yes, we, got? we have. It said it comes from the faucet. We we were right. Comes from the faucet in clean water. It's granular like. That is more than likely, the dip tube, in your water heater is disintegrating. <sighs> And it's little white particles, almost looks like calcium deposits. But a uh, good way to, do, to check that is, does maybe when you turn your hot water on, it starts getting cool pretty quickly instead of staying hot like it needs to? If that's the case, that's the surefire sign of a, of a dip tube going bad. How do you check that? Get plumber to come out and take the, take the 
unit apart? Well, you have to you have to go to the cold water side of your water heater, right, and take the pipe off. And if you look down in the hole, like going in the middle of the water heater, there's a little white ring right there that is supposed to be a plastic tube about four, four and a half foot long. Right. And what it does is it shoots the cold water down to the bottom of the tank and pushes the hot water up. Well, you'd be surprised when you go in there and you go to check that little tube, you'll reach down there with your finger and you'll pull up just a little ring because there's no tube attached to it. Yeah. Which means all your water is cycling at the top and you're not getting the benefit of uh, hot water. It's just the cold coming in and the lukewarm going right back out. Exactly. So if you've got that case, and it's very common, especially if you have an old Rheem water heater, R-H-E-E-M. They had a little trouble years ago, and uh, their dip tubes were disintegrating, and uh, there was a big class action suit that cost them a lot of money. Wow. And uh, had to go out and replace all these dip tubes. Not a hard thing to do, and they're not expensive. They're just four or five bucks is what they cost. And uh, it is something a do-it-yourselfer can do, but most people doesn't, don't know that a water heater has a dip tube. So, like the, the, the texter that texts in about his tub, you'll see those little granules coming out. Or if all of a sudden your uh, faucet's not running full stream like it normally does, they'll hang up in the little aerators in your faucets, maybe in right. your bathroom faucet or your kitchen faucet. So you can check those out. But if you've got a, little white, a lot of little white particles in there, you'll be all right. There you go, Texter. You may want to get that checked out. Check the dip tube on your water heater, and that may be the origin of your problem. Could be. Could All right. be. All right. We're going to take about a two-minute break here on Tricks of the Trade, listening to John Allen on this Saturday morning, 93.1, the location, WTJS, and also y'all, take out the apostrophe, y'all.com. We'll be right back. Hey guys, this is Mark here from Jackson Off-Road right here in Jackson, Tennessee. Let me tell you a little bit about what we got going on here. Jeep and auto accessories, weather tech gear, step bars, bed covers, bed lining, lights, offering anything vehicle related. Big or small, come see us guys. Hires, tires are big right now. We're doing discounts on tires, we're doing discounts on hitches. If you're in the market for towing accessories for your campers, come see us. Fifth wheels, goosenecks, bumper hitches, wiring, we got you. Look for the monster truck, Jackson Off-Road, right off 45 bypass, 668 80 84. Hi, this is Tammy Reed with Hickman Realty. If you've been thinking about selling your home, now is the time. It's a seller's market, and we have buyers waiting for homes. You need to use a realtor. With the market changing every day, you may be underselling your home. Don't trust your largest investment to just any realtor. You need to put it in the hands of the most experienced number one sales team in West Tennessee. Call me today for a free no-obligation market analysis on your home. You may be surprised what your home will bring. Call Tammy Reed, Hickman Realty, 616-6000, 664 Now that we're home more than ever, we need to feel safe. Call it a sign of the times or the world we now live in. What do you want to keep safe? The people in your life? What do you want to protect? Your possessions? The things that belong to you? The things that you've worked hard for? Wouldn't it be nice to have tested, trusted 24-7 protection? Peace of mind, real protection that's always there for you and your whole family? Well, now you can with one of our state-of-the-art home security systems. Everyone thinks their home is safe until the unexpected happens. Start protecting your home and loved ones today with the affordable next generation in home security. To keep your family and property safe, call 1-800-784-1192. Representatives are standing by to assist you. That's 1-800-784-1192. 1-800-784-1192. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, News Talk, West Tennessee. It is indeed. It is a Saturday morning, kind of a cloudy-looking Saturday morning, and a little cooler than it has been. This is Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. Yeah, I got up this morning and put my short socks on. Yep. 
Because it's supposed to be the beginning of summer. You're going to get ankle bit, frost bit on your I'm ankle. Probably. I, it, it is. But, but like I was saying a little earlier, I went outside this morning because Secretary of the War Department was fussing because the air conditioner wasn't working on her side of the house. Right. And I didn't get it serviced this spring because I've been too busy doing other stuff. But I think I got a little low Freon problem. Uh-huh. Little gas is a little low. Units dragging a little bit. Right. So I got to do something with that to uh, get her kind of cooled off yeah. in many ways. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's odd that you should mention that because I was getting ready to come come down here yesterday to do my Friday show, and I walked out the door and there was this huge white truck in my in my driveway. I said, I know that truck. It wasn't you because you was a black truck. Yeah. Your boys have got white trucks. Yeah. But anyway, it, my heat and air guy had showed up. And he, he was back. Yeah, he's back there cleaning the coils and checking the freon and getting everything, getting everything all set up. So I almost didn't recognize him. He's lost so much weight. I mean, he he done skinned down. Have you seen? Really? Have you seen Buck lately? No, I talked sure. to him on the phone yesterday. Well, his phone voice is about the same size. But, yeah, <laughs> but he's a whole lot smaller than he used to be. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, man, he looks he looks fit. And, Fit as a fiddle, man. He's ready to roll. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but he got he got me taken care of yesterday. So I'm, well, you know, I guess I, I need I'm to a... give him a call so he can come take care of me. Yeah, yeah. He he does a good job. Does a good job. Yes, speaking, he does. Speaking of people who do good jobs and do good jobs for for you on a regular basis, we have a, a relatively new sponsor. They've been with us about a month now. That's uh, Quality Outdoor Products out there at Three Way, mm-hmm. and uh, they do metal buildings and metal roofs. And they uh, the good thing about it is they they do them correctly. Correctly, promptly, yes. and do it right the first time. Absolutely. Just, and, uh, but yeah, I was, uh, you know, I visited the site several weeks ago, right. uh, and I was really impressed with what they do out there. And uh, they actually had employees. Whoa! <laughs> people live working. People. Live wow. people working. Man. And uh, and uh, wanting to probably hire some more, but. Uh, it was a nice little operation. They had a place, a little like the store, that you could walk in and get your parts, your screws, your caulk, all your accessory items. Right. And uh, then they had the manufacturing uh, sections outside in different buildings where they would uh, cut your poles and trim your metal and make you make your uh, your panels. Yep. And uh, it was just kind of neat to watch how they could slide a perfectly flat. Nothing wrong with it, piece of metal in one <laughs> end of a machine, and it comes out all wrinkly the way you want it on the other end. Exactly. And and it it you know they can make it any length you want, any shape you want. Yep. It was it was really good. And then get your poles bent and uh, get them welded together where they could make you a precisely fit yep. frame for the uh, concrete slab you got there on the ground, and. Uh, and if you don't know how to put it up or don't want to, they've got people to come put it up for you. Yep. Yep. So yep. I, well, I, th- I think we talked about this last week, maybe. My, my next door neighbor just built one with these folks with Quality Outdoor. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty building. It's, it's a two tone gray building. It's got, it's got one high roofed area for his, uh, he stores his boats in there. Yeah. He has one that he needs a little taller. And then he's got a, another one that's got a door, one that doesn't have a door. He's got an open area, like a lean to. Uh, all concreted and ready to go. I mean, yeah. it's a it's a cool looking building. I mean, it went up in a hurry and it went up right. And they made it the way he wanted it. Yeah. They didn't. He didn't have to settle for some stock pattern, yeah. which is, hey, this is all we got. You'll have to live with this. Yep. They made it the way he wanted. Exactly. So, no, yeah. no cookie cutter goodies out there. That's right. It's all That's all right. the way you want it. So well, you know, we 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 want you to go visit quality outdoor products we do they'll help you put your order together they'll package your metal roofing components and trim have it ready for you to take with you that day or they can deliver as john just said at the best prices around 888-485-5372 quality outdoor products one of our great sponsors here on tricks of the trade no glad tricks. to have them no tricks there they're all right here that's right that's right Four one zero seven five six zero seven three one area code to victory honda text line that is our means of talking to you today we're having a little bit of a problem with the uh, call-in studio line uh five five times and it's still not working so i'm still uh, I'm scratching my head y'all.com is available to you and not only can you uh can you uh Hear what we're doing, but you, as we say from time to time, you can watch the sausage being made. That's right. Yeah. 
Speaking of sausage, I don't yes. smell anything frying behind me. Are we still you missed bound? The, you missed the pancakes uh, earlier. They were they oh. were they were on the griddle when I came in here. Oh, at they the, were at huh? the Dixie. Yeah. Well, uh-huh. you come on down here and eat breakfast. You know. Yeah, I could on the other could. side. Yeah, I told John, other John, John Rawl, that I have. Uh, we're keeping our, our grandkids this weekend. Oh, the, yeah. the twins. And I've been told to call home before I leave the station this morning uh-huh. because they're fixing breakfast for me. Oh, oh aren't you oh, special? Yeah, we got coffee, we got toast, and we got grits. Uh huh. Yes. Now, wait a minute. If my memory serves me right, you do something to your grits that I don't do to my grits. I don't you, think so. What you put I? salt on your. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Salt and I, butter. Salt and butter. Well, sugar and butter on my side. Yeah, that's, I, th- I think I'm probably in the minority on that. But that's just the way I grew up eating them. Uh. I had a survey come across Facebook yesterday talking about watermelon. Yeah. Two questions. Cold or warm, salt or not. Oh, cold and salt. Amen, brother. Yeah. <laughs> But not on your grits. <laughs> but not on your grits. Well, I don't want no cold grits. But uh, yeah, that's that's just the way you know. And I, I can. It took me a while to uh, to get to where I could eat cheese grits. But now that I've eaten them, I really like them if they're done properly. But yeah, I got to have my salt. Got to have my salt. My daddy used to wouldn't eat a watermelon until August. Is that right? Because the only watermelon that was fit to eat in his book. Uh-huh. Was those big old dark green Harris black ones? They got them out of Arkansas. Yep. And uh, of course, I always had them striped ones. Oh yeah. Yeah, the little oblong striped. Uh huh. Yep, those are good too. And uh, and then I developed a little allergy. It kind of made my face swell up. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. And and I found out I was kind of allergic to one species of watermelon. Really? Yeah. Didn't didn't know it till. Kind of got all scratchy and swelling up and yeah. all that, oh, but yeah. uh, but those Harris black ones, I kind of find them too. I can eat them all right. The one we've got in the refrigerator right now, she got locally. My wife picked it up the other day, and it's a uh, sugar daddy. You know, they got sugar daddies that are about the size of a basketball or a little bigger, the dark green ones, and then you got the sugar babies that look like a little uh, about cantaloupe size. Huh. And they are very very sweet and they're good. Oh what? Not familiar with those. Yeah, try one. Try the only one. sugar daddy I ever had was that taffy stick, <laughs> taffy on a stick. That was a sugar daddy. It pulled all your all your fillings out while you were That's in the right. movies. <laughs> you could bite that on that and pull your fillings out. <laughs> oh Lord, yeah, that was the orthodontist dream oh. right there, boy. I will tell you what, you know, oh. I think a lot of these candies that they you know used to have and still do. The I think the people that originated those were dentists. I think they for job were. security. <laughs> I think they were. I was uh, I was uh, eating a breakfast the thing the other day. And you and I had talked about this before. Uh, my wife brought home some Rice Krispies, and I haven't had Rice Krispies in quite a while because uh-huh. I, I don't normally eat breakfast. I'm just not a breakfast person. But I said, "Boy, that looks good," and I, I poured myself a bowl and I eased the milk up in there. And you know what? You got to get in the bowl with those things to hear them snap, crackle, and pop. It's not the way. I don't know it what don't, they did to them. I don't either. They took it out of it or something. They well, took the air even, out of them. They don't even, they're not even shaped like they used to be. No, and they're smaller. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, I don't know what it why, why did they have to do that? I don't know, but it takes all the thrill out of breakfast. That's right. You know, it, it, you always you put your milk in, and it overflows, and you you get the residuals that fall out over the ring. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you could... And they still had a little sugar on them. Uh Uh-huh. And you could wipe them in your hand and eat them for later. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, but we digress. Oh, well. 731-410-7560. This is Tricks of the Trade and or Breakfast. With John Allen, That's and right. uh, we've got about we got about uh, thirty minutes or so, so we got plenty plenty of time. And we apologize again; the phone line, uh, for some reason, would not connect this morning for me. But we are available on uh, on the text at four one zero seven five six zero. So whatever you got going this weekend, uh, John can probably help you get it started. Or if you're stuck in something, help you get out of it. If you painted yourself into the proverbial corner. Oh, it's been done. Oh, yeah. Well, I, yeah. Been. You've done that. I know. <laughs> I've done that. You know, I started. I, uh, it's been about 20 years, but I was working in an addition, and they wanted uh, an epoxy floor. And I wanted to do it while there was good ventilation. And the, the doors, uh, I mean, the windows and the doors 
were not put in yet. It was just the stud walls. But while I had good ventilation, I wanted to do that epoxy floor. Right. So I, I did it. I, I, we started rolling and putting the epoxy floor and working to the far window. And we could just step out and yeah. be done with it. We took a break and went to the lumber yard to get uh, some uh, stuff for the next project we were going to do. And we came back. And they'd put the windows in. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't get back to the corner. <laughs> so we had to paint our trail over again. Paint your footsteps? Yeah, had to paint the footsteps because <laughs> we had to get back over there and, and work our way back to the door. That was kind of embarrassing, but it, it should happened. Should have made them take the windows out. That would have been fun to watch. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, this week it, it – it was still, well, last week mainly, but this week, it was still kind of warm first of the yeah, week. Yeah, it was. And uh, there was a little thing that uh, we get a lot of calls on this time of the year, and it has to do with your power vents that are on your roof. Right. And uh, it'll get maybe in the mid-80s or one point is 90 degrees a week ago, and uh, people get to listen, and they don't hear the vents come on. Right. And so they'll give you a call, and they'll say, you know, my vent's not working. Can you check it out? Something's not right. Well, with a power vent, there's only three things that can go wrong with it. You've either got a, a thermostat that's gone bad, telling it not to turn on, or you got a motor that's gone bad, uh, or you got a squirrel yeah. that has tried to come in through the vent, and he's pushed the screen wire into the fan blades, which locked up the motor, which caused it to burn out. So you're back to, again, either a motor or a thermostat. Right. Well, it's cool this weekend, and if you haven't checked yours out, it'd be a good idea to climb up in the attic if you're able, because you got to do this from the inside, and it's, it's hot. I mean, it's real hot. Yeah. And then it gets back sometimes a little common sense. I don't understand why these new builders that have got to put these power vents in and they got these real steep, tall roofs and you go in there to service one of these fans and it's 20 feet up in the air <laughs> and you're looking down at, you know, ceiling joist. And yeah. you have no way of getting up there to it. Nothing to put a ladder on. If you no, had a ladder you, with you, you. You have to bring pieces of... Uh, cut down plywood or two buys up there and build you a floor to put you a ladder on to get up to it to check it out. I mean, I would think they'd have a little better sense than that. You would you think. Know, yeah. or, or a way you could access it a little better. But they don't. But anyway. Why do they put them up that high? They think if they put them up there, they can, they can move more volume of air? Well, or? you know, hot air rises. Sure. You, got, you got to put them up high. Yeah. But at least you need to have some kind of a framework that you could, you know, yeah. build you a chicken ladder or something up there to, yeah. to where you can get to them and, and service them so people like me can get up there and, and, and work on them. There you go. Because there's been an awful lot of people other than me that try to service these. The next thing you know, if you don't know where you're walking, something's going to go through the ceiling downstairs. Yeah. And that's not a good thing to do either. Not a good thing. No, 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 no. no. But anyway, get those uh, attic vents checked out. Uh, this time of the year is good to do that. You can normally buy the parts for those uh, at your big box stores. So if you want to do it on the weekend, you can. And it's not a hard thing to do. Just remember to turn the power off before you get up in the air. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> you might get a little surprise. You may get a quick trip down. Right? I'm telling you from somebody that knows. <laughs> oh, man, man. Now, if you got, you talk about a power vent now, one that is electrically operated with a thermostat. And all yeah, it's got a motor on it. used to say a thermostat. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so if you, if you got the old whirlybird type, what, what do you have to worry about with them? If, Just if, make if it's, sure if it, they're spinning. If it's not whirling, and what's it, what's it usually? Bearings or... It's normally a bearing or to, you know, most people think that what makes those whirly birds turn is the wind on the outside. Yeah. It's not. No. I mean, that helps them sometimes, but it's normally the air coming out. Yeah. So if you're not spinning and it spins, you might want to look and see if you've got soffit vents in your house because if it can't pull air in it can't exhaust air out and it won't spin and it won't spin <sighs> so uh 
you know, I, I laugh at people that put these big old ugly plastic bags on top of their whirly birds. Yes. <laughs> you don't have to do that. You can do the same thing with a piece of cardboard on the inside and four thumbtacks. Yep. You just cover the hole for the winter time. Right. But, uh, you know. Unless some, it's 20 feet in the air. Some people, that's just the way they were taught. You uh, you got to get that little bag and put up there and oh, put yeah. on it. And, and all that duct tape we've wasted. Yeah, that's right. That's one of those things. But anyway, yeah, you need to make sure your whirly birds are spinning. And uh, if you don't have a whirly bird or a power vent, maybe you've just got gable vents. Yeah. Uh, you need to make sure that the screen is on the inside. Otherwise, you're going to have critters in there. But here's where I find most of the ventilation problems on a roof is where uh, people have gone and uh, had storm damage or whatever, and and they get a new roof put on. Yeah. And somebody will say, "Well, we're going to we're going to eliminate that that whirly bird and make some put something up there that looks better." And they'll put what's called ridge vents up there. I was going to ask you about those. Yeah, Yeah. which I don't like them. But anyway, they put them up there and forget to cut the plywood out from underneath them. Or they'll lap the shingles under them and cover the holes if they were there already, and they don't work. So if you're going to have a ridge vent, make sure that it's installed properly and that proper... Uh, instructions were followed on leaving the slots to where it can breathe. Right. But then again, it's one of those static systems that depends on hot air rising. And if it rises and it can't get out, then you just wasted your money. You just got a bunch of hot air collected up on the top of your house. That's right. There you go. Got a text coming in on the Victory Honda text line, 731-410-7560. This texter knew that already. He, I say he, the texter says, how do slugs get in the bathtub? I've had several recently. Is it anything to worry about? It would be for me. <laughs> Unless yeah. I'd ordered escargot. Have you, <laughs> have you ever stepped on a slug? I have. Now, you talk about slipping in the bathtub. Yeah. That's That'll what put you'll you down. Do. Yeah. Now, I don't know the situation behind this text. True. But I, I am familiar with that problem. If this is a real old home, now I have no idea of knowing what the circumstances are here. You're welcome to add some, uh, some clarity if you'd like to, Texter. But I would be crawling under the house and checking for a couple of things. Number one is I'll almost bet you that the plastic drain line, if it's a relatively modern home, the plastic drain line has come loose from the waste and overflow line. In other words, a hole in your tub. Yeah. And that allows critters like slugs to climb up the pipe under the house or if it's a slab come in that way and they'll climb up through the drain and walk around and then get frustrated because they can't reach the handle turn the water on so they can take a shower <laughs> nothing worse than a frustrated slug in that's the right it, it just takes them so long to explain it yes it does <laughs> that's, they've been trying to get there for months that's yeah. right house is from the 1980s and on a slab city water and sewer Okay, Uh, the drain line has probably disconnected itself from the waste and overflow. And if that's the case, they're coming from the dirt, climbing up the pipe and into it. The only other way that I have seen slugs uh, come into a house is on houses, older homes that have crawl spaces. Uh Uh-huh. And back in the day, for reasons that I don't understand, there was what was called a common drain, which was the main sewer pipe that ran under your house, your neighbor's house, and the next house. Everybody was on the same sewer. Wow. And essentially what it was, when, it, when you under the house, there was like a four-inch ca- uh, cast pipe that just stuck up and stopped. And all the other pipes just stuck in the top of it. You could you could go into the house and just watch the water come out of the kitchen sink and drop into down in so, into the bigger pipe. Whoa! Well, slugs would get in, and also uh, crickets and other little varmints. Yeah, would climb in there, and an occasional snake uh, would climb in there and come up the drain and come into your house. 
and um, that was back when people had S traps, and you didn't have to worry about having vents on your plumbing like you do now. Right. And uh, that was perfectly legal back then because they just didn't know any better. Wow. It looks like it would put off some fumes up under no, there. It didn't, no. It didn't. No, because everything ran out. It just went on down to the big creek, which yep. joined the big pipe, bigger pipe that that's went to right. New York City. That's right. Off in the fork of deer, and there she went. There yeah. she went. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that that's it. But that's probably where those slugs are coming from. You've got a drain detachment. So if you have a way... Of uh, if you have an access panel in your house, since this guy's on a slab, yeah. If you have an access panel to where you can look under your tub and see those connections, you'll probably see little slug trails all under there. So you go in there and check your plumbing, make sure it's all put together, and then you can probably dust the underside uh, of your tub with salt. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah. D- didn't you, when you was a kid, didn't you used to melt slugs? I was going to ask you the same yeah. question. <laughs> we used to do of that. Of course we did. Yeah. We, we'd go around looking for them just to watch them melt. Exactly. We exactly. could dissolve them little suckers. Yeah, it, it, it didn't, you know, I used to use the ice cream salt because that, uh, that seemed to do better. You know, the big granular stuff. Uh-huh. You just pour it around them and watch them trying to figure out how to get out. That's right. <laughs> you know. We were bad that, little kids, weren't that we? That was back before we had video games. <laughs> and P- and PETA. <laughs> That's right. And PETA. That's, That's right. right. There's probably did. something wrong about that. If I think did there that probably nowadays. is. Yeah, we'd get arrested, put under the slug jail. <laughs> can, You're listening can. to Tricks of the Trade with John Allen, slug expert extraordinaire <laughs> and uh, purveyor of, uh, of services. Uh, I, I speaking, just had a thought. Yeah. Can you imagine going up before Judge Christy Little or Hugh Harvey for being arrested <laughs> on assaulting a slug? <laughs> Is that assaulting or just salting? Uh, uh, well, just, that's, that was the point, assaulting a slug. It would be both. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> da, da, da. We're going to take about a 90-second break, and we're going to reorganize here and be right back on Tricks of the Trade. Stay with us. Call us. Text us, 731-410-7560. Check us out on y'all.com right now. Stay tuned for a very special message from Dustin Ring. Hey, Jackson in West Tennessee. This is Dustin, and I buy houses for cash, and I want to buy more. I also work with over 700 cash investors that also buy houses. The best part is we buy them in as-is condition, so you don't have to fix a thing. We will even pay for your closing cost, and we can also close in as little as seven days. We buy vacant houses, rented houses, fixer-upper houses, houses that have caught on fire, foreclosing houses, left over divorce houses? Are you relocating for your job? Or are you a tired landlord tired of dealing with problem tenants? We'll buy those houses too. And hey, no matter what the reason is, I'm here to help. Call Dustin Ring at 731-549-5480. Again, that's 731-549-5480. Again, this is Dustin Ring, and I buy houses for cash. Call me today or text me, 731-549-5480. Polish salons are more than just ordinary nail salons. They have a place where you can come and escape from your everyday stress and busy lifestyle. Polish prides themselves in providing their customers with fabulously indulgent nail care while maintaining the highest level of cleanliness and sterilization. Come and relax and be pampered with genuine care and with eight wine options to choose from. Join them for a new polished experience at Polish Thompson Farms on University Drive, 731-736-4599 or visit us at polishjackson.com. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, News Talk, West Tennessee. Saturday morning in Jackson and West Tennessee, this is Tricks of the Trade with your host, John Allen. With my co-host, Jimmy Duke. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk a little sense and a little nonsense and <laughs> I, think we, we, I think we covered the second part of that <laughs> you know but we i'm were, glad I, you know I, I when i first saw that question about slugs in the bathtub i said i don't think i honestly i don't think i've ever seen one in any of my bathtubs in all my years but but that is a real a thing i mean that happens that, that well, amazes me I, I could answer that because i knew about it yeah because i grew up on college street and in jackson here and we had 
one of those common drains that went between my house, Mr. Easton, and Mr. Goff. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you could look under there and see the water running. And occasionally you'd get a slug that would venture up into the old clawfoot tub. And uh, it, it just happened. And here we are on break. We just uh, brought up another memory that uh, my, my, my <laughs> wife, bless her heart, she's one of these Yankee Americans, and she saw something on Little House of the Prairie the other day. Yeah. And that was one, one of the kids, and I don't remember their name, they had caught a June bug. Yeah. And had a piece of thread, and they were flying that. Wait a minute, not Little House on the Prairie, or the Waltons. Walton, okay. Well, same they, were, they were flying a June bug around in a circle. And she said, what are they doing? I said, they just put a piece of string on a June bug and flying around. Why do you do that? I said, because that was entertainment it back was. then. It's so high entertainment. That's right. That's yeah. before video games and Atari and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you actually had to stand up to do that. And it's like, well, doesn't that hurt the June bug? Which your response was, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Not one June bug ever complained to me. I never Not heard a the word. the first one. Never heard them say a <laughs> word about nothing. Oh, Lord. You know, one thing, Will, if, if you use Stormy to do to work around your house, like put in some new windows or something, yeah. you will not have problems with slugs coming in your windows. That's right. Or anything He's else. He's got slug-proof caulking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, how did we get here, and how do we go home? <laughs> and, <laughs> but he does. Yes. Yeah, and, and uh, they slide right off. They, they, <laughs> they, they try to. Go up that aluminum foil that he runs around the uh -huh. house, and they can't get they good traction. Right to the ground. They'll yeah. just slide off. Yeah, by the time they figure out they slid off, it's a month later, they forgot that, why they were going anyway. That's right. Of course, <laughs> it may have took them a, two, a week or two to climb up the wall, but it was. That's true. Now, it, we just, we got, oh, God, how did we get here? Okay. Uh, uh, it kind of be siding in windows who we're talking about and not uh, with, with Stormy. And, uh, they do. They do great work. They do a lot of work for you. They do. I'd like for them to do a little work for me. I know. I'm trying to get him <laughs> over there. I swear I am. Uh, but yeah, he he, uh, he 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 puts your windows in where the critters won't get in around them. That's true. That is and, true. And uh, so you can keep the ants out and the slugs out, and uh, any other kind of little things that kind of and to keep the wind out too that's true that, they, that's true things you can see and things you can't see keep the heat out too if you if you if you have it like in my case uh my uh, my front windows and my master bedroom window faces west so late in the afternoon this time of the year it gets hot right in there before bedtime we changed those windows out he put in some uh some of those uh i forget what the what the gas is that's in them that's even argon argon yes yeah. and i'm telling you man it made an instant difference in the temperature in that room they, can, stuff. they do that. And have you ever seen their argon? I haven't. I'm not supposed to. Oh, well, so that's why. In that, that case, in that case, I'll quit looking. And when you don't have argon <laughs> in there, it fogs up. And you can't see out your window. There you go. So there, there you go. There. It, yep. uh, but no, he he does a great job. He does the, the some puts in some of the best windows I've ever seen. Trims them out right. Gets the caulking slick down, just like it looks like the metal. Right. That's kind of an art, right that there. That is an art. And then uh, if they can put your vinyl siding on, they can yep. do that. Put patio some covers. Patio covers, gutters, uh, just about anything to make uh, your house as maintenance-free as possible yes. on the outside. The older so, I uh, get, the more I like that. Oh, isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. I don't go up and down ladders like I used to. I don't go up and down level floors like I used to. <laughs> We, you and I are just good good to get from one side of the room just, to the we're other. We're just coming apart at the seams is what, it, what it's all about. <laughs> Give us a text this morning, 4107560. Let us know what's going on around your house, and uh, maybe John can help you out with uh, getting something started or getting something finished. Uh, speaking of Stormy and Economy Siding, you can call them at 422-3828 or go online at economysiding.com, and uh, when they take care of business, uh, it will be done properly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I got a little something I want to talk about right now that, right. that I, I don't laugh. It's a true story. <laughs> We've laughed a bit. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was with uh, an older lady the other day. Yep. Uh, up in the grandma years, which means she was just older than I was, yeah. you know. And uh, 
she was having trouble with her toilet. Now I think I may have talked about this. I think this. we did on Thursday, but we may not. Uh, we may not have had the same uh, listener base on Thursday. I, so, well, I can't remember, but it, it, I forget. You know that happens too when you get older. Yep. But uh, her, her toilet was running all the time, and yet she says, "I've changed out my flapper, and uh, it still keeps running. I can't find out where it's leaking." Well, the thing of it is, she had several things wrong, but the, the way you test it out, you know, you may have changed out your ball cock or right. your fluid master, as they call them now. You may have changed out your flapper. You might have even gone to the extreme and uh, taped a nickel to the top of your flapper to where it'll just hold down a little more. Right. And uh, But it still seeps, and you don't know where. Well, if you'll go into the pantry... And I, and I said I was at Grandma's house, so to speak, and I knew this lady had food coloring. You don't have to go out and buy a fancy test kit and right. all this stuff. Just get you a little flu color, food color. And in this case, she had red. And because she had made a strawberry cake the week <laughs> before. And I said, I need to borrow your food coloring for a minute. And she says, huh, what for? I said, I told you I was going to check your toilet out. I said, I just don't have any more on the truck with me right now. There's no sense in me running to the store if you've got some in the house. She says, well, I got some. So I came out and I took a few drops of the red food coloring and dropped it in the tank, not the bowl, but the tank yeah. of the toilet. And uh, handed it back to her. And she says, now what are you going to do? I said, we're just going to wait. <laughs> we're going to sit here and talk about old times. You know, uh, you can tell me what's been going on in your life for the last 20 years. I know this lady. Yeah. And uh, uh, we're going to see what happens. And uh, in a few minutes, I said, let's go back to the bathroom together back here. We're <laughs> going to we're gonna unveil the big surprise. All right. So we go back on there, and I said, now you raise the toilet lid, and you tell me what color is the water. And she raised it up, and she says, it's clear. I says, well, then your tank is not leaking. She said, explain that to me. I said, okay, flush your toilet right now. She flushed it, and the water come out of the tank down into the bowl, and it was red. Red, yeah. Yeah. So then we got to looking and found out what her real problem was, which was the little overflow tube that comes up beside the flapper uh, in the toilet. And the side of it, had uh was copper it was an old toilet yeah and it had completely almost disintegrated and you want to know uh excuse me wrong toilet this was a plastic overflow pipe right that had a little crack in the base of it and you want to know why she had a crack in the base of it because in her older days what yeah. she was always taught to put a chlorine tablet in the tank of her toilet yep. to so-called sterilize, sanitize, whatever it is. But whatever yeah. the reason was, it was wrong. You could do that when you had a copper. All the parts in there were copper. Right. But now things are plastic, and those chlorine tablets will make all of those components brittle and break. So you could literally take your finger and stick it in the side of her overflow tube, which was where her... Uh, leak was coming from and it was just right above the water line and it would only happen when her little tube came over and it dropped her water in there which right. squirt up against the side of it when the ball cock was, would kick on bringing water into the tank huh. so anyway if, if you've got a chlorine tablet some of you older seasoned people out right. there take the chlorine tablet out now I'm going to tell on one of our co-host around here uh oh this this fellow down at the other station down here called sea bass yes I you know, know him? i know mr bass yeah believe it or not he and mr reeves used to uh, room together oh lord in one of my apartments <laughs> and if you remember because you appraised them yeah liberty square apartments downtown yeah i had these reproduction pull chain toilets yes with the, with the, with the and, tank uh, way they, up in the air. They right. were cool oh, to look man, at, yeah. and you yanked a chain to flush the toilet. Right. Well, Bass had put a 
three inch chlorine tablet in that <laughs> tank to keep it clean. Yeah. And it completely disintegrated the inside <laughs> of that wooden case that had a plastic liner. Right. And he flooded that apartment and the people underneath him too. Oh man. Now to this day, he won't, he will not admit to doing that <laughs> or know how that thing got in there. Yeah. But, he did it. Somebody put a mint in there. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's right. But man, anyway. Man, man, man. All right. We need to take one quick more, uh, one more quick break, about 90 seconds, and then we'll come back and wrap up this edition of Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. Stay right there. We'll be right back. I don't feel like I'm 23 anymore. Lack of energy during the day, difficulty sleeping, reduced mental focus and memory, weight gain, including belly fats, reduced sexual desire, and performance. Studies show after the age of 30, most people produce 3 to 10% less hormones each year, and I felt it. I decided to do something about it, but I didn't want 152 shots of synthetic testosterone per year. What I discovered is changing my life. All testosterone replacement is not the same. Hormone pellets contain the same chemical structure as your body's natural hormones. They're placed under the skin and released bioidentical testosterone consistently to the bloodstream and last up to six months. Same thing with estrogen for females. I feel great. I don't want youth wasted on the young. I want it wasted on me. Feeling better for you can start with a simple phone call. Dr. Shannon Bone at Advanced Rehab and Medical. It's 731-503-4277. That's 503-4277. Call today. 731-503-4277. You'll be glad you did. Previously on the Under the Hood Show. I'm Chris Carter here to answer your calls. That actually may be the iffiest part of the whole show is me on the phones. I mean, I think I do an adequate job. I do a you're, fine you're, job. You're doing just fine. Never underestimate your role as the voice of the listener. That's my job is to not understand a word that you guys say. So far, we've found the perfect balance. The Under the Hood Show, every Saturday morning from 6 till 8, presented by Gene Langley Ford in Humboldt. The dealership service built. Attention Medicare recipients and anyone turning 65. Medicare has approved new benefits not included with original Medicare and older Medicare Advantage plans. You may not be getting all of the benefits you're entitled to, including in-home aids, telephone appointments with your doctors, home-delivered meals and prescriptions. These benefits may be available and it's a free call to enroll. The new plans may also offer free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free wellness visits, and gym memberships. Call the Medicare Benefits Line now. It's easy. Call 800-747-1186. 800-747-1186. Find out if you're eligible for new benefits like meal and prescription delivery, in-home aids, and telemedicine. Some plans may have a $0 monthly premium or zero copays for big out-of-pocket savings. Not all Medicare Advantage plans are alike. The new plans have more benefits for many people. Call 800-747-1186. 800-747-1186. Eight hundred seven four seven one one eight six. It's the top of the hour, and you've got the power. The power of Super Talk. WTJS 931 Alamo Jackson. We are back on Tricks of the Trade. Go to the Victory Honda text line. It says outdoor privacy fencing, which goes right along with the uh, one of our other sponsors we need to talk about. That's but right. Outdoor privacy fencing. Why do they use nails that come out? Are there some companies that actually use screws? I am regularly having to fix my fence. Probably because it was not built by West End Fence Company. That's probably so. Uh, these crazy fence fences that are you buy them in panels. Yeah. Oh, they even use staples. staples That's yeah. even worse. But, you know, the, the problem is not the fence. The problem is the nails. Uh, they probably didn't use galvanized nails. Okay. And they turn loose, they actually get a little rust around them, and they start backing out, yep. which is similar to, uh, similar to the problem you have inside of a house where you have nail popping on sheetrock. Right. It's when your timbers start drying and they start pushing the nails out. Very common problem, but uh, the person is texting if they'll, when they go to nail one back in, instead of using a, na using a nail, either use a screw or a cement-coated galvanized nail. And they won't have that problem anymore. Okay, just just ask for a cement coated galvanized nail when you go to Ace Hardware, big box store, whatever. The there case you go. May That's be. right. Yeah. That'll okay. work. There you go, Texter. Appreciate that. I I have uh, have had the same problem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. It said it was not West Ten. Oh, yeah. Go. Yeah. 
Absolutely. West End Fence Company, one of our sponsors, and they uh, they do all kinds of fences, wood fences that will stay where they put it, mine has, and uh, they do chain link, they do ornamental iron, they do industrial fences, they do commercial and residential fencing. They do it all. They do it right. They clean up after themselves. And, man, once they once they finish the job, you never know they've been there except for the fact that the gate's working now. That's right. Yeah. And they even take care of accidents. I had one this week where a delivery truck in one of my apartments apparently didn't use his rearview mirror, and he just backed all over my wrought iron fence out there. Youch. And they had to come out and fix the panels and fix it back up and did a great job. and. We're just glad to have them on staff. Absolutely. You can call them at 668-5959, located at 2158 Hollywood Drive, or email Ricky Pennington in the sales department at rpennington, the number one, at yahoo.com. It's West 10 Fence Company. Another text coming in. Uh, let's see. Actually, a two. One, uh, how do you prep and paint fireplace brick? You have to use a special paint for that that is made for high temperatures. Clean off all your soot. Sometimes you got to use a little muratic, muratic acid on that. Yeah. Get you a good penetrating primer and then use a uh, fireplace paint. There you go. There you go. And darker the better. Darker the better. Okay, there you go, Texter. And one more, the, uh, the, the gentleman talking about the fence or the Texter talking about the fence. Poor quality, quick subdivision building and selling, I think. That's probably you hit it right on the is head. That what the, is that what they uh, refer to as builder grade? Yeah, yeah, it's getting worse every day. Oh man, I hate to hear that. Well, normally we would go out with some of our new, uh, new old bump music today, but we push this thing all the way to the end, and Jimmy Leach is uh, is waiting in the wings. He is. Yeah, so he we, might pull the plug. I we're bet. gonna we're gonna have to let him in because uh, at one point in his career he was he was uh, walking around armed. And we don't want to upset Mr. Leach. Mm. <laughs> Jimmy Leach, the investigator, coming your way right now. We'll do this again at 8 o'clock next Saturday morning here on 93.1. It's called Tricks of the Trade for good reason. And John Allen is your host. And I'll see you before next week, uh, I hope. Well, y'all have a good Memorial Day weekend. That's right. Remember.